Yo, what's up? It's your boy Stargo J, and I am <laughs> man, posting in a hot minute. To be honest, Richard, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> but now, um, what I'm gonna speak today is I'm speaking off, off the dome, um, and it's gonna be something. Um, I'm gonna be talking about a certain one of my newer favorite, newer gen favorite mangakas, Tabata. So there's something that you know needs to be, you know. Kind of something that I always want to really just talk about, especially with how to bottle rights and how certain like story elements and stuff that he does that just you know kind of puts him above other newer gen series for for me personally. Now the first thing I kind of want to talk about with Tabata writing is that how how Tabata kind of got that old style kind of writing to where the point where a lot of stuff he sets up in advance and a lot of stuff, especially the first you know. Chapters and stuff like that has always been filled with these mysteries so he can go back and pick up on you know, you know on later things <clears throat> so like There's a lot of stuff that he can come back to especially in later sagas or later arcs And there's a lot of stuff that he has set up in earlier chapters and that's kind of where his foreshadow comes in that Like I feel like a lot of people can say say that the foreshadowing when doesn't make a strong story stronger but I feel like it's certain ways that you have to use because anything can be used Anything that is cliche or anything like that can be used in the way that fits a series better and is still unique to that series in a certain way. And I feel like Tabata has done this with foreshadowing. Like the thing is, for, Tabata's foreshadow isn't just foreshadow. It's potential material to set up for the arcs. Like, it kind of gives us as fans enough to theorize about what's going to come up in certain arcs. What's going to come up with this? Like, the thing is, and I feel like it also ties into another point that I want to bring up. Tabata is one of those writers that lets you kind of figure things out without telling you exactly what he wants to say next chapter. So there's a lot of speculation that us, we as fans, can do and theorize. It's pretty much why I, I believe that Black Club, the Black Clover community has a lot of, has a lot of creative video, you know, uh, underrated too video creators on theories and stuff like that and stuff that they want to get all the chance because there's a lot of stuff that Tabata has left us you know to theorize about and you know stuff like that to you know get off our chest and think about because he doesn't give us the answer right next you know right next chapter which a lot of authors does and I know a lot of people don't like that writing study because they can't they don't want to look for answers themselves they want you know they want authors to give them the answers that next you know, or the same chapter. And I feel like I'm kind of glad that Tabata hasn't done this. Because I kind of want to theorize about certain things like that. I kind of want to make videos about what I want to think about. Or when a certain thing that Tabata has foreshadowed is coming through. I feel like that just gives us more freedom as creators to not have certain things, you know, certain things and stuff like that. Like, I feel like honestly Tabata and Ola are pretty much the ones carrying this setup thing for, you know, for, you know, Carrying the setup type of story type of thing, like in the in the you know in Shonen Jump right now, because a lot of times if something happens and it's just going to be answered next year, you know, chapter for a certain series, you know, for certain things. And I feel like the only other series that I can really just say that has my hope right now that's going to do that too is JJK, so or Jujutsu Kaisen. But like I said, what. Like I said, the setup things that Tabata has done is pretty much one of the biggest reasons why I just enjoy that story so much. It's because, like I said, it has so much stuff that has been theorized that can be theorized and stuff like that about within his writing. So, another thing I also want to get off my chest is that Tabata has rights and sagas. So, a lot of people tend to just jump the gun because of one art or this like this, but I honestly... He gives us time with those villains, those characters to make them better. Cause I'm not gonna sit here and say that Patchy on on you know first arrival was a top tier villain. He or what we thought was you know a top tier villain at that point in time. I feel like honestly, what really made him stick out and made him so much more special was the time that we got to spend fan you know focus on his mysteries and stuff like that as a character throughout the entire saga full of art. And I feel like we'll get that with the Dark Triad, but I feel like a lot of people are just jumping the gun because they're so used to authors writing a single short arcs and when that arc is over that it's a whole nother either you know a little calm down arc between that or there's a whole nother arc 
it doesn't focus on the same set of characters. And I feel like that's kind of what the benefit of Rain the Saga is. And that's kind of why, like, I, 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 I also, let me get my words straight, I also just mess with Tabata's writing. Mainly because Saga has been pretty much there for a while now. And I'm thinking about, like, I don't think there's really just anybody who really just wrote in Saga as much as, Saga as much as, let me see, maybe Toriyama? And I, you know what? Now that I think about it, I think the last saga, well, and Oda, I think, I think Oda's is pretty much considered, can be in, considered in sagas, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I, like I said, that allows us to get built better build up instead of focusing on, a, of course, there's sometimes you can do it better, but I feel like honestly, there's a lot of quick written villains and stuff like that that only gets their chops off by being a great seven out of ten character, or that people just realize is a great villain because he has a backstory that is really good, and that's about it. Like I'm not downplaying backstories, but I feel like honestly, what gives us chance to do that is by giving solely hinting at certain stuff and getting us better developed with that characters. Like honestly. It's kind of why I really enjoy certain characters such as Gintoki, even though they're not the villain. But even though he's not a villain, but because Sorachi kept us entertained with this little development or this little slip of a backstory here and there. And I feel like Tabata has done that with villains. I heard, uh, I know Tabata has done that with certain characters. You know, that's what makes it interesting for me. It's when you can pretty much build up this. You know, pretty much build up this. How would I put it? Pretty much build up this kind of wall or just look, this little hype around the character that makes the character stick out so much better for me. That's what made the midnight. You know, that's what made Lick slash that a great character for me. And honestly, it's like it's a lot that Tabata has done with these characters, and I feel like honestly, there's a lot of stuff we can get into with the Dark Triad. Like, <clears throat> like I said, I just I'm just glad like it, when stuff is slowly built up, it makes for me a better series or a better time for characters to shine. I feel like honestly, it, it it's not just like you know them sitting on the shelf and they get all at once and they're just instantly trash type of thing like that or they're there but they just sit there and then they finally get like they ha have to have no development or nothing like that or no story involvement they get one chapter and they're automatic great character so Tabata has always done little hair little hair for that character to the point where like it's built when it when it comes to pass it's always hype you can see that you can see that in characters such as like I said you know you know uh Patri you, you know just certain characters like that where we got hit you know, hence some little slivers of backstory and stuff like that to make them so much more better characters instead of just giving it all the next chapter and we're supposed to understand that character. Like, one of the biggest mysteries in the series that I just truly enjoyed was Zerk slash Zora because honestly, it wasn't revealed who Zora was until, or his backstory or anything like that until like after that little arc happened. And that's kind of what also helped me understand a lot of stuff because a lot of mysteries wasn't just handed out to you by Tabata. It let you know, it allowed us to theorize about certain things. You know, where to see if he was a big fool or who he wasn't, you know, what he was. Like, cause a lot of us thought he was villains. You know, there's a lot of stuff and a lot of speculation that can be said, you know, stated here. But you know, in summary, I just really enjoy the way Tabata writes. I just enjoy that like that setup because there's not a lot of setup because fans are impatient about every single thing. Honestly, a lot of times a, a fan is really the is willing to drop a series because a series is predictable, but are also ready to drop a series when something they predicted doesn't come true, and they're so angry about that a writer chose something that was easy not unpre you know was easily not in their prediction, but they also don't want to they wanted to go their way. That's how. That's kind of why a lot of these series, the newest series, that have a lot of potential to be in some of the jump get dropped because they want people, they want the story to be good off first and second chapters. I feel like honestly, all the first and second chapters have to do is get you interested in the series, and I feel like Tabata has carried it, and I'm kind of glad that he's allowed to build up foreshadowing and stuff like that, even though a lot of people might not like it. He's still able to do that, 
which makes a better story for when everything does come down. And it makes such moments way more hype when it comes down. The devil fight is proof of that. Even though a lot of people are going to tell you that the elf arc was trash when the devil entered it. I feel like the devil build up <coughs> and shockingly, you know, plot twist made that whole entire fight, that whole entire arc worth it, to be honest with you. And how everything just came down and it led up to that right now. Made, in, you know, a total sense. But, like I said, it's just something that I really just enjoy about that writing. That gets me excited to read Black Clover. And makes me just continue wanting to read this weekly. Wanting me to see spoilers and get hyped about what's going to happen next. Just, you know, seeing how much, you know, gets me hyped for the future. For future chapters when I finally see that all the stuff that he's setting up pay off. So, um... This has been Stark OJ. Like I said, I haven't posted in a while and I'm trying to post some more. <laughs> I've been saying this for a while now. I've been procrastinating, you know, with stuff, other stuff and, you know, things like that. So, um, if you like this video, give you a thumbs up. If you, you know, comment down if you've got a topic that you want to see me discuss. Um, other than that, um, if you dislike this video, you know, you, you, while you're here, you might as well just, you know, like the video. But if you're new here, can you please subscribe? Subscribe to your boy. This has been Stark OJ. Peace. This has been Stark OJ. Peace.